There's a place called a gin mill way down in the slums. There's a place called a gin mill way down in the slums. My baby goes that night and stays till the morning comes. All right, everybody. Welcome to Blind Pig Confessions. Yeah, yeah. We are back home, finally, at Allie's Hill House. Well, yeah, it has been a little bit, hasn't it? It has. It's been a minute. We've got a... Uh, Good a minute. We've got Mr. Roberto on the show with us. Sup, muchachos. We got, we got El Pato over there, El Pato. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah I'm, I think Whatever I was, your, how your new name you want to so be So you're going to do that? You're going to go ahead and change your call, your call sign to yeah. El Pato? El, well, I, no, El Pato. well, technically it means the duck. It does. So. Now, I, we talked earlier, and El Pato in South Texas is this Mexican breakfast burrito joint. It's also like a food uh, brand. It's a Mexican food brand, by the way. It is. Yes. But... In Puerto Rico, it's something totally different. It means the homosexual. Uh, then, so then that would be a no. You so didn't, feel free you didn't tell to me that. <laughs> I was so hoping you were going to say like the gay fish or something. That's so perfect for Pat. So feel free to change El pato. your call sign to that. No, 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 I'm good. El pato forever. <laughs> and we have a, a very special guest on, actually, and he's very much affiliated with Ali's Ale House. One Mr. Nick Wangler. Nick Wang. Or Sorry. Nico, if you want to go by Nico. What's happening? How's it going, man? It's so quiet. It's going. It's going. It's going. Yeah, he's it's a going well. Sound guy. He's a, he's more than a sound guy. No, I meant he. I mean, he, he pretty he much likes, runs the entire music no, scene I mean, here. He likes to run the sound. <laughs> he, he, <laughs> he, he hates doing mic work. <laughs> it, d- don't he, tell my affiliates that. He's, he's not a front man. Is that what you're trying <laughs> no, to say? I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. What that you that you don't like doing mic work or that you run everything? I'm more of a tech guy. See, that's apparently this is the tech side of the table over here. Nerds. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. The, we are the. We are the sound nerds, but only half of it's pato. I'm just yeah. saying. Oh, oh. yeah. It's, yeah it's only, wow. There's only one duck here. I'm surprised you weren't the one who brought the cider <laughs> last week. Anyways, <laughs> um, so yeah, Allie's haven't been here in a while. Freaking missed this place just because I missed the scorpion wings. And I gotta ask. I mean, you guys have been here longer. Have come back longer than I have. I heard that there's a. Pe- a pepperoni chub on the menu? Yeah. There is. You've seen the chubs? The chubs are there amazing. Are cheese, there are regular non-pepperoni chubs, too. There are meatless chubs. <laughs> see, see, when I think chub, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm thinking all meats. So yes. what, what is I have a chub? vegetarian daughter who orders the chubs with no meat. It just <laughs> seems awkward in, in like seven different degrees. Dad, but <laughs> Dad can I order the chubs? <laughs> oh. But oh. the uh, the pepperoni chubs are phenomenal, and you get I mean if you're hungry you get like a mound or a mountain of. It chubs. doesn't matter if you're hungry or not; you still get the mountain. Well, that's yeah. true. It doesn't matter yeah. your your well, appetite level. The to go box is a 12 inch pizza box. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap! Well, no, they're they're literally they're so they're like uh, just pizza dough. It's more like biscuity, but they're about they're about the size of your fist, and there's like 12 or 13 of them or something like that in Holy the plate. Crap. Yeah, no, it's. They, remember, they don't really call them appetizers here. I think they call them shareables. Yeah. Because even everything oh. is ev- everything on pretty much the appetizer plate is a large portion. The nachos are like nine pounds of nachos. Yes. Um, yeah. You, you 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 look. It's embarrassing to order them by yourself. Mm, and then I'm, ask to to get it to go. No, no, no. Just just when the whole plate comes out, it and and yeah. there's just and there's one plate in front of one person. I think his idea of embarrassing and my idea is two different things. Like my eyes light up when they bring that shit to me. <laughs> I look at it as a challenge, not Anytime an embarrassment. You see a chub, your eyes light up. I bet. That's I right, bet. especially you know a good meaty chub. There's oh, nothing better. Man. But I'm but I'm looking at those big plates and it's you know I'm worried about all the other people looking at me going, holy crap, fat bastard, Jesus, is he gonna <laughs> eat all that? I don't. Yeah. I don't care if people judge me or not. I eat the shit out of that. All right, all right. Well, now I know what it is. So now it is good with a side of scorpion venom, though. You can dip your chub in scorpion venom. That is delicious. It, it's like oh. it's like big pizza uh, uh, garlic knots with cheese and and pepperoni and stuff in them. So it's like yeah. a big garlic knot. I mean, all joking aside, I'm not kidding you. It, they're it's freaking good. phenomenal. <laughs> they really are. They're delicious. We can make fun of the name all day long. Oh, and will. then you know, if they had some old chub here, I'd say you need to order the plate of chubs with an old <laughs> chub in the can. <laughs> And then you well, just have chubs all around. If you ordered the plate of the chubs, that old chub be. already there. That, old I, chub. Can't, I can't say much because I, I like the uh, shark board or the charcuterie board, and that's just a giant plate of meat. So Meat and cheese. Meat and cheese, yeah. The, char- the charcuterie board is good. We, oh, we yeah. shortened it to shark board because shark board. It's just easier to say when you're well, doing Well, yeah, and charcuterie just sounds too uh, prim and proper for this group. It's just a shark yeah. board. Or just a shitload of meat and cheese, whatever hence, you want to say. Hence well, the Nick, last you, five minutes of talking about chubs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, Nick, and of course, the, the, the scorpion sauce and the wings and, 
and all that kind of stuff. Nick, I think you just had those, right? Oh, fantastic. They're a little bit hotter, <laughs> this batch. You've been saying, yeah, he's been saying that for like really? a half hour. It's like, these are really yeah. hot. This I don't batch wanna, is hot. I don't want to say bitching, but more of a, holy shit, guys, you're not going to believe how hot these are this time kind well, of a yeah. deal. It, I've eaten them a ton of times. This time, exceptionally hot. <laughs> I don't touch them. They I, also look a little I, sloppier than they normally do. Like, they normally, the sauce is grilled in a little heavier, and they don't usually sauce them that heavy. So I think you got a batch of heavily sauced, which would definitely then make a difference, too. I just, I, I've never, I don't, I don't, I think, I don't uh, touch that sauce. I think Rod Lee does that on purpose. Uh, oh. When, it, when there's certain certain people that order things, and he knows it's you. Well, especially if he's here, because <laughs> he's here on Tuesdays, he said now. He's going to be, you know, hanging out. He's going to be here a little later on Tuesday, so... Yeah, you know, if we're here, we're we're bound to get like an extra dash of uh, scorpion special powder sauce? on stuff on. Yeah, well, that too maybe, but you know, I'm sure he likes to just. Oh, that's for Jordan or Nick. Yeah, right. let's well, he, let's just throw a little extra dash of uh, scorpion powder on there or something. Well, he does that with the uh, the burger challenge, the scorpion burger challenge. That thing is awful. First thing he asks is, "Who's it for?" <laughs> That's awesome, though. That is an that's a horrible I, I've challenge. I've yet to to uh, accept that challenge. I have. I I've I will never heard that it's um, and, literally and a pain in the ass. I've watched it. No, I, I wa- tried it. Wasn't even a pain in the ass. I watched someone sitting there throwing up on the patio. What? Oh, through. I didn't get sick. I I got about halfway through it and just decided it just wasn't worth it. <laughs> no. it I I I could have ate more. I didn't I, want to. I think maybe <laughs> I'm, I'm, if, I think maybe if they did more of like a because some of the sites you know you get a, like some cash or something not just your name on the but I don't actually ever see any pictures of people up on. Is there a board here for people who who successfully navigated? No, they need one though. Huh? Yeah. See now if you had, I some think like, they're a little more sophisticated than that. Screw here. that. If you're going to do that and you win, not getting a T-shirt ain't enough. You need to have your picture plastered up here somewhere. A wall of shame. I don't know that it's shame. I think uh, <laughs> well, no, I, went I, for it. I've, well, se- the I've seen grown men fail. I've seen grown men crying and so vomiting. What, what's the and challenge? I think the is girl it completing eating the entire plate. It's, it's a pound of fries. Yes. It's a pound of so fries dusted. Fries. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Dusted oh, with shit. scorpion peppers. With scorpion habanero powder. Habanero powder. Habanero and scorpion oh, habanero powder. Pop- there's, okay. there's some scorpion power in there too. But and then you have the burger, which is a. Like a scorpion, you know, it's soaked in whatever, and it's got fresh jalapenos, ghost habaneros, pepper cheese. ghost pepper cheese, plus all the scorpion sauce on it. So you have to eat the burger and the fries. In in one quick phrase, it's a motherfucker. Oh, yeah. it is. But I but I think um, there was like a twelve year old girl who actually beat it. What here was was what I remember. Why you got to say that? Then that makes me want to fucking exactly. do it. Exactly. Well, it, tonight I'll tell you no. why I did it. <laughs> For one, Brendan had previously tried it and failed. So that that was the prize to me. That was motivation enough. It, if I can win this thing and Brendan doesn't, you know, that was good. But it was the jar of sauce. You get a jar of Venom Jam. Mm-hmm. Oh, basically. the Venom Jam is good. So, Have you had it in the jam form? I have not. I've only done the wings, and the wings are phenomenal. I love the freaking wings. So they make an actual scorpion Venom Jam. So like thick, you know, like a jam, literally. Okay. And it is, oh, my God. It is so freaking good. They use that. To then mix with hot sauce to make the what you eat as the wing sauce. Oh, okay. So the the scorpion jelly is just a whole different animal all on its own. Yeah, I, okay. I again I stay away from all of it. It's uh, I have a limit, and I just I can't. It's it's too much. You can. You just would hate life for about three days. Yeah, I don't need to go through that. Yeah. Three days is about yeah. right. I have enough trouble. Yeah. You know, it, serious. It's every, right. Every shit for three days. Come on, man. You're, you're screaming. I have enough trouble getting through the day. You <laughs> actually sit and think about it for about twenty minutes. You hold it. You know you have to go to the bathroom, and, and you, you wait twenty minutes trying to build up the the, the willpower. Courage. Yeah, you need like a you need like a Pepto Bismol enema. And your mind says just drink a lot of milk before you go in there, and you'll be okay. And that, no. it doesn't work. No, like maybe a little Novocaine on your rear end might help. <laughs> but, you know, damn. I've I've been there, been there. So that's something definitely you don't want to tr- like try the jam with a finger and then go take a piss because no. apparently there's no. a story that you. Well, the jam's fine. Yeah, there's the a Jordan. Story. There's a Jordan. There, there's a Jordan story with with fingers and dick in milk. Yeah. So <laughs> you stuck your dick in milk. I did. Oh. So several years. This has been many years ago. I was actually with my first wife at the time. Oh, we should re-record that uh, that I, uh, that song, that Justin Timberlake song, "Dick in a Box." Yeah. Dick so milk. I went out and I was the first time I grew <laughs> habanero peppers, and I didn't think anything of it. I just went out and picked the habanero peppers, and I put them in, you know, brought them in the house, whatever. And I went in the bathroom, decided to take a leak. 
Well, <laughs> about 30 seconds into it, I thought I was going to die. Didn't know what to do. Tried to wash it off. That didn't help. So I literally went in the fridge and got a glass of milk, stuck my dick in the milk as the wife came down the stairs and walked in the kitchen. And she was like, the fuck are you doing? <laughs> like, uh, That's how the I know this started. looks weird, but funny story. This is the only thing that's making me feel better right now. <laughs> did, Wait, hold on. Did she realize it was milk? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh. She was making a donation. Well, if I was that impressive, you know. I, I have to ask, was it 2% or whole milk? <laughs> um, <laughs> I've always drank 1% my whole life, so it was 1%. Yes, 1%. It was probably buttermilk afterwards. <laughs> oh, shit. And no, I did before you nasty bastards ask, I or no one else drank the milk after. <laughs> I was about to say, he didn't put it back in the carton, right? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, well, he used a glass at least. <laughs> most most well, of us I'd guys drink right out of the carton. <laughs> I would have just poured the freaking shit off my dick. <laughs> oh, it was horrible. It, the burn lasted about five hours. Oh, we're gonna, I'm going to have to have someone recut dick in a box with, put your dick in the milk. <laughs> 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 I will tell you this, though. It does help. Tremendously, well, sure it does. You don't oh. feel any burn until you move it. Now move. the whole reason you could have been a you could have been a serious asshole though, and and uh, and just tried to hold and 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 fight it, and then go head sex. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, she's gonna love you forever after Ooh, that one. Fire! Talk Talk remember, it was sensation. it was the first wife, so nobody would have cared, no. including uh, myself. No, but <laughs> but you know because they, they got those like. Gels and whatever that heat and cool stuff up or whatever you know in stores and all that. He, he, I it might it might have worked. It might have done something. He, I have a he, very he high been pain tolerance. Oh. I have a very high pain tolerance, and I, I consider myself a pretty manly man. I'm telling you, the intenseness of that pain was unbearable. Okay, it right. was whatever would make it feel better. I would have done it. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, we ran into it with we. Old high school story because we used to go to Hooters all the time in our senior year, every football game or whatever. We got super, what we thought back in the day was super hot. Eight mile, we, uh, six mile wings. They make special yeah. six mile wings that weren't on the menu, they said. And, uh, and you'd be, they're sloppy. You know, Hooters wings are kind of, you know, we'd get them, they're extra sloppy. And if you don't forget to wash your hands when you go to the bathroom, it gets a little warm. It burns a little. Yeah. So we're, it's, it's nothing new, but yeah. When, so when I know he says that that's, it was I, really painful because I never saw him stuck his dick in the pain. iced tea or the milk at the Hooters. So, you know, so yeah, I, I believe him. That was just habaneros, but they were fresh grown habaneros right off the vine. So straight, and I had all that oil, oil, not realizing I had all that oil on me. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't imagine if it had been a, a scorpion or a reaper pepper. Dude, if you'd I probably would have <laughs> been hop, hot, uh, hospitalized Dude, for that If you'd have rubbed your eyes once, man, you'd have been, you'd have been blinded. I think I would have rather had it in my eyes. <laughs> I'm just telling you. <laughs> It's not the first time you've said that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, we're back at Alley's talking about scorpion wings and uh, chub, uh, pepperoni chubs, which is why I brought this up. I have a buddy of mine here, a special guest who uh, I want to get on the mic, Richard. Say hello, Richard. Hey, guys. How's it going? Good. How you doing, man? Good. He's the reason that I brought up the whole chub story, and not his chub, but he, m- he mentioned chubs, and I asked him, what's a chub? He's like, 20 bucks, same as downtown. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, well, hell, about, let's about try eight it. inches. <laughs> <laughs> Only for you, buddy. Freaking Mandingo over yeah. there, man. Even in the freaking well, I was below nice. freezing. I was talking about you guys. <laughs> eight inches. Oh my god. Get inches. I got to hit my old lady twice. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Nick. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Nico. Go. What's going on on Wednesdays here at Alley's on 37th? We got Nico's open stage, uh, and we'll have our featured artist as usual. Um, from 8 to 8.30, and then uh, open stage sign-ups the rest of the evening, about 20, 25-minute sets. Yeah, and you guys or do. Or about four or five songs. And, and it can be anything. You got you can do comedian. If, hey, you know, it, it can be a comedian op- open mic night, too. I know there's a couple of them that have closed down recently yeah. that if you want a little open mic time and uh, to try out your material, you can do that, too, right? Yeah, I- anything goes. And that's Wednesdays. Comedy, magic. Yeah. So, Dude, have you ever had any magic guys on? I, I haven't had any magic guys on yet. I uh, Dude, magician. W- so for our listeners, I mean, a lot of us, you know, we've come from musical backgrounds. We understand what an open stage is. Yeah. Can you kind of tell the listeners what that might entail? So let's say that I'm stupid and I come up here and I say, ooh, open mic. So I can just walk in the door, walk on the stage and sing whatever the hell I want. Yep. Anything you want. Original music, encouraged, but anything goes. You can come up, play a, a, a cover song, whatever you like. Again, so I'm going to play ignorant. So it's like karaoke? No. Um, it's your it, stuff. you got to play your own music. 
But, well, that's why I'm letting him answer. I'm playing ignorant. I know what it is. <laughs> or what's what's included? Is there a back line on stage? There we go. That's what I'm looking for. I'll, I'll provide a drum kit, all the full PA, the mics, everything's included. You can bring your band in. You can come in with your acoustic guitar. Um, there, ha- you know, I I'm not real big on a karaoke. I mean, just because right. that's not really what this event is for. That's what I want to hear. Yes, but it is different. If I have a a a new vocalist come in and they just want to try out uh, singing in front of a crowd and they're not just doing it to get a buzz on and ha- you know right. if they're serious about honing in on their craft if, I, ha- if we don't I have, have been known to play backing tracks for people if we don't have to have a monitor times. with the lyrics going across with the, right. the colors changing that's different if they're just oh well I've got this music background but I'm just a vocalist right now and someone right. made me this background that's acceptable. We're right. not going to put up karaoke lyrics on a freaking screen. Hell, even yeah. Axel right. Rose that's what needs I'm a monitor to. with a freaking um, lyrics. Like, Come on. That's yeah, what I'm saying is, you know, and that's why I want people to understand that right. you can't just walk in here. There's not going to be a songbook where you can sing out of it. It's You need to at least have some kind of musical knowledge These are free music. Sure. And, and memorized lyrics type of deal to come into an open mic of setting course. and sing. It's not going to a karaoke night where the words are on the screen. You can just go up there and belt out some right. horrible rendition of something. Because you can. This it, is this is a lot more structured, a little bit leaning more towards. Uh, I don't want to showcasing say professional, your but showcasing talent. There we go. Yeah, you're showcasing yeah. your amateur talent. Well, and, and it's an opportunity for uh, beginners who've never played on a stage in front of an audience uh, whole, to be able to come up and cut their teeth on something. There we like go. That. So. That's see, that's perfect because obviously, you know, I own a DJ company, so karaoke is a a thing that I have to endure. So I'm used to that setting, but open stages is, is like definitely a step above that where it, it's people that actually have that talent. It's not just come up here and sing necessarily because you happen to like that song. You actually know how to sing that song. It, and it, you need to get in front of a stage you, or, or in front of people, and you, you need sure. to practice, and you need to develop yourself. And, exactly. And, and bars aren't willing to pay you yet, so an open stage is a perfect opportunity to come in and kind of hone in your skills and see how you feel in front of the crowd and things like that, right? Yeah, it, it, it's for, uh, I mean, we have professionals that come out uh, just to yeah. practice or, or mm-hmm. rehearse that uh, that new song they wrote, or say a comedian that's got a new uh, a line they want to see how it goes over well, if it goes over well with the audience, um, you know. But it, like I said, the uh, even the the random person that just wants to try and sing, I'll I'll go see who's in the room, who came out, and we'll find find a guitarist There's usually to go guitar- up there and hell, sit in. Hell, you got so. that dude that uh, sits there at the table and just plays harmonica to other people's songs half the time. Right. Yeah. Uh, he's Pete, actually Pete. He's Pete. actually, but he's pretty, he's really good, and it goes along with yeah. a lot of them. Like there'll be a guy just doing guitar up on stage and doing his singing, and Pete'll be out there doing accompaniment on a freaking harmonica, and he's doing yeah. a great job. Uh, it, that's the other thing about the uh, open stages. It's a it's a good opportunity to. Uh, do a lot of networking with uh, other musicians, things like that, and uh, you know, um, how do you get lo- an impromptu jam session? A lot of bands begin at open stages, you know. Well, it's one so. thing to play in your own room, and then to play—I don't care if it's in front of five or ten people. It's one thing different to be up on a stage, but also I, I think you know, what maybe you haven't mentioned it. Whether there's, they get an opportunity to be on a stage with pro-level equipment, you know, mm-hmm. monitors. Um, all the tuning. Uh, Nick and I spend hours, you know, on the weeks that I'm here talking about because he'll get new toys. You know, he'll get a new board. He's got himself a nice new board. That's all. He, he, the key, the the sliders actually just move automatically. You know, he's I'm got one of those. Tech yeah. geek. Oh. Do, do you guys need a moment? Yeah, we're, yeah. we can excuse ourselves for a no, second. We, yeah. we've <laughs> had one. You guys want to touch each other's knobs and no, stuff. No, we've done that. Okay. Yeah, we've do, we've touched each other's sliders all the time. Well, you know what? It, that's kind of what uh, sets Nico's open stage apart from a lot of lot of other stages. Is uh, it it's run by a sound production company. I you know I run a studio live indie. Yeah, and I I mean that's what I do. So I'll set up a, a full band production lighting and sound for an open and, stage yeah and and typically uh, you you'd have to hire a service or, or a production that big so uh, it also gives them an opportunity to uh, work with a sound engineer and know what to expect when, when you start playing on a more professional level exactly that's, so. uh, that's the thing i was trying to push out was that they get that opportunity for professional level quality as an open stage sure which you don't get a lot of normally True. And a lot of open stages I've been to, especially like if you go to a comedy open stage or open mic night or something like that, it's it's it might as well just be DJ equipment, you know. No, and no offense to the DJ equipment, but 
musicians versus you know playing what DJs need versus what musicians need. Whole different. Whole oh different yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And yeah, that's yeah, yeah. but that's why I can sit here as a DJ owner and I can prompt you know Nick to to talk about the difference because it doesn't offend me. I know what we do and what you know we have a a niche where DJs and karaoke uh, that they're needed because right. there's people out there that that's the level of of what they do. Sure. And that's why I want people to understand that open mic is not just karaoke. It is something up well above and beyond that. Right. It, it's very much more a, a talent based more than just a I got drunk and I had a good time singing with my buddies. Right. You know, we, right. we, we got together and sang piano man. We don't know the lyrics, but we had fun doing it. Right. You know what it, I'm saying? That's it, and that's why I was pushing that. It, I, I don't get offended. I know what no. karaoke is and sure. I know what its place is. And, you know, and, and, <laughs> well, you have your fun bar events. You, I open stages more. Uh, you know, we uh, encourage uh, talent growth more than maybe, uh, say, karaoke or or anything like that. Well, um, karaoke is easy. It's predictable. It's you know what the songs are. You know what the lyrics are. You know, exactly. the, only, the only issue there is, are, do your vocals suck and can you keep a beat? <laughs> you know, and half of them can't. You know, and and but that's the ju- that's not what it's for. That's for drunken nights have out having fun with your friends. Sure. And you know, not a lot of not a lot of people getting a big career off of being a karaoke singer. Now, o- it doesn't. It's not that it doesn't event, hurt. Open stage events and karaoke events. Karaoke events also kind of like intertwine in the middle somewhere in there too. Because hey, we're out here having a good Sometimes, time at open yeah. stage as well. well right. We've, exactly. you know. we've done some karaoke contests in the past where you actually get some really good singers. That's, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, I've heard some karaoke singers that should definitely oh, be yeah. at your open stage because they freaking rock the house. Sure. Now, could they do that without the lyrics on the board? I don't know. Would hope so. I would hope so. You know, so. Well, anymore, right, we can all pull them up on our phones, right? Yeah. <laughs> so. But a lot of yeah, karaoke exactly. singers who may have a good voice also might not, you know, they might not have songwriting abilities either. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's all, yeah, it's all just a de- different kind or of. Or vice versa, have a songwriting ability and, and no not, ability to not being able to belt it out. You sure. Know, or, no, or not have, know anybody that can give them the musical accompaniment. Yeah. So they're used to the karaoke part because they don't have to think about that. They only have to think about the lyrics and their voice. But, yeah, we have, we've seen some really good ones that I think have actually gone on. I, I'm sure there's been a few that have been started out in karaoke. Hey, you're a really good singer. Okay, well, you know, I'm going to go sing with my friend, and maybe I'll write some lyrics. And I, There's got to be some out there that are doing that kind of thing and, and do make it. You know, and What's not his face uh, singing with Journey right now? He was doing a Journey cover band or whatever. Really? And then, yeah, they, the oh, Neil found him on YouTube. Oh, he was no like, he, like he was about to give up, and he gave one more YouTube channel a try, and he found whatever his name is, Pineda now, and he was, like, blown away. And like, hey, holy crap, let's get this guy in there and try it out. And, hell, now he's touring with him. It's been a couple of years now. Right. And, and you know what? He can sing. Like, as much as he can do Journey stuff, the kid alone, he can, he, he's can. he got some He's got some pipes on him, man. So, but, yeah, me coming, like, being in the musical background and thinking of trying to do some type of open mic night, I can't. Because you can't fit fucking 15 mariachis on this motherfucking stage. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, and trying to get them all on. We could on this stage. This is a pretty <laughs> big stage. Oh, yeah, this stage you could. This stage you could, but, you know, half of them are going to be working, washing the dishes afterwards. So. Oh, oh, damn. Oh, wow. hey, I'm Mexican. I can say shit like okay. that. <laughs> uh, am I allowed to laugh? Sure. Yes, you're allowed to laugh. Sure, if they sure. say it, you can laugh. Jeez, man. <laughs> <laughs> you got to know the rules of racism. Come on. It's <laughs> <laughs> rules. I don't know. I'm trying to so 15 mariachis. Uh, what's the width of the average mariachi hat? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, about uh, 38 inches. Man. All right. So no, no, you might get 10 up on this stage in a row. Yeah. You'd have to have it. You'd have to have I two can, lines. I can double 10 up. inches or 10 mariachi lines. hats. I lost track of this conversation. 10 mariachi hats. Okay. Woo. All right. You know what, though? We are a beer show. And we have a beer in front of us. Beer hey. sample in front of us. So why don't we go ahead and uh, and sample this? I'll read about while the guys are trying it, then I'll try it while they talk. All right. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna try the New Belgium Day Blazer Easy Going Ale. It is a four point eight percent alcohol by volume, so it's it's easy a lightweight. Going. That's an easy going. It, it's a uh, you know a uh, domestic light beer kind of uh, ABV on it, and that's really all it says. Day Blazer Easy Going Ale. So Roberto looks like he's ready to talk. My nose says nose. There's something about the sm- uh, the scent. I don't want to say smell because I don't want to speak the derogatory of it. But the scent, um, it, it's it smells like beer. You know, it's, and it's and a standard. It's and just, it's, it and is. It's, it's, a, a, it's a standard. It's a standard. But, ale. But you know what? It, I tasted it. Does it. Seem it's not as bad as its scent is. 
Yeah. The, the the nose on it is the nose is is less weird, desirable a, than the, than the, the actual I, flavor. I actually thought it was gonna have a sour note to it when I smelled it, and then I tasted it, and it's just a very pale pale ale. Yeah. I mean it's it's light. There's there's not much there. This could be a get somebody who's a Coors or Miller light drinker into craft beer kind of beer. Yep. That's what its I agree purpose would be. It's uh, citrus and honey. I'm not as, as what Although I, it, I'm kind of surprised. I mean, it, I'm a new Belgium fan. Yeah. Th- this so seems here. exceptionally light for for that brewery. It's it's yeah. a transitional beer. It's definitely made to entice It's a craft. domestic light drinkers into craft beer. It's That's a what craft it's for. boat beer. I I will call I it. I don't even think it's a, it's too light for it's, me to drink on the boat. I don't know. I'd have to replace my water with this and then have an actual beer. You don't get enough beer flavor. I, I well, maybe it's the IPA. The, I will give it this though. It's not sickening sweet like some domestic lights. Yeah. It doesn't have that yeah. that nasty sick sweetness to it. True. It's, a, it's yeah. got a real clean after. There's no aftertaste. There really. is no. There's no bitterness. There's no sourness afterwards. What do you think? No, I'm a little surprised myself. Like upon the scent of smelling it, I immediately thought like. Keystone Light or something like that. It's not even really an ale. But after tasting it, it's um, you know it does taste like a pale ale kind of. Really, I'm I'm going more with a really light lager. (laughs) Yeah, a very very light lager instead of an ale. It doesn't have that. It doesn't have the crisp lager finish though. Right, but that's where I'm middle in the the middle there. It's 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 tasting lager. The the scent's off. Um, very more light lagerish for me. You know, yeah, well, I don't know. I think I can still I can do this on the boat. I think I can do this as a Yeah, I think it I think it'd be an easy one to do. I will barbecue and drink this. All right. I, yeah. I, I, I can it's not something that's going to bog me down and it's, you know, but then again, I'm probably paying a little bit more than a <laughs> Miller Lite where yeah. I could probably get the same effect. Yeah. But, you know, I I, I too, Nico, I like New Belgium. I yeah. like their stuff. So well, that was I, my that's my aha I, beer. I, I would go with this. Uh, New Belgium was what introduced me to craft. Oh, really? The La Follet, yeah, the the sour brown ale, uh, you know. You and know what? So I've always I've always given a, a you know, I'm, I've always keep New Belgium up on the top of my list when I'm trying some stuff. You know, I'm I'm not going to bash on it, but I think I'd barbecue with it too, but it'd be more uh, I'd probably boil the brats in it. That's a good. Oh, yeah, there you yeah. go. That yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That would be and drink the rest. This would be perfect for that. It's it's and a cooking beer and drink yeah. the rest. There, there we go. go. A cooking beer. Well, that's a new term well, we have. Well, now. but you can drink and cook with it. That is slightly offensive, but it it, it would make a good cooking beer because no, it's got the right characteristics for that. I do make yeah. a, a chicken called pollo borracho, which is drunken chicken. Which I can. I'm gonna think I'm gonna try that. Is that that one where you shove the can up is the beer can and chicken? Okay, so like beer can chicken. Yeah, I just made that. I just made that the other day actually. I do it all the time, except I used the uh, Sun King's, um, or no, I did not. I used the one from uh, Florida, the one that we didn't like, that pale ale we didn't like. I used that. The and daughters? S- yeah. Shoved it up the chicken's, the, the chicken's arse. 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 Yeah. No, I do, I do get what you're saying. Brats or chicken, I think this yeah. would, would actually be all right. Yeah. Because it's a little bit more flavorful than your don't you usually, mainstream beer. Don't you right. usually cook a brat in a darker beer? I do. I mean, like I, I said, I, really? it's a good I beer. It, oh. It's just lighter than... I usually what boil I my like. brats in a darker beer. Yeah, and the thing we all have to understand is, and I, you've, Nick, you've been into the craft beer scene for a while now too, right? Yeah. yeah. So and so have we. And How can you not when you're here? <laughs> That's true. When you're here as much as you are, it is a craft beer bar. <laughs> but <clears throat> our, our senses have changed so much. Like I ordered a Chinook Alicious tonight, right? Now, three years ago, you would have never seen me. I would have been like, oh, it says IPA. You know, it's going to be like all hopped out and shit. I would never have ordered it. But now I look for it. I'm like, oh, Chinook Alicious? I know it's good. I order it. So our pals have changed a lot from the days of drinking Keystone, Miller Lite, Coors Light, whatever your your uh, domestic beer of choice was. Killian's was a craft beer or whatever. Right, Red Killian's. Red Stripe. That's right. Yay. Killian's, beer. which now, which I used to drink when I was in um, in the Army at AIT. That's all we had really was, was Killian's and Coors Light. I chose the Killian's. Now I drink it. It tastes like syrup. Yeah. yeah, you know I, what I mean. I had one at the movie theater the other day. Yeah, I was like, wow. Yeah, it, it does, totally does not taste different. like freaking just syrup. It's just like beer syrup. It is. I'm like, uh, I think they forgot to like boil this and boil the syrup out of it. Yeah. 
I'm drinking a Schnickelis just right now. Are you every really? Time Excellent. I, every time I can get it, I order it. So it's good. It's yeah. okay. I'm, it's yeah. not my favorite. I mean, I, I'm I'm on the Scarlet Lane Dorian right now, which which we did catch them on, because this is not the Dorian coconut. It's I've not. had two of them now. There ain't no coconut in this beer. Really? Nope. This is the Dorian. This is either the Dorian Stout s- straight or the Espresso Stout. I don't have enough to know between the two of those, but I know there's no coconut in this at all. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get us a sample of that one because I think the group consensus on that will give us a final decision on it. Because I do? think you and I feel the same way, but I'm, I'm, I want all five of us to try that and, and see if we taste any coconut or if we taste coffee or what we taste in it. I've had two glasses. I know what it is. Well, I know you have, but the rest of them haven't, so <laughs> you can deal with that. But you guys carry on. I'm just going to go grab that for us real quick, and we'll do that one next, all right? All right. Um, so... Uh, Nick, you also do, and and well, I think we were wanting to hit it too, but not just us. Uh, so you're Studio Live Indie. So those of you who don't know, go to Studio Live Indie. Nick will take care of whatever you need for your shows. Go talk to him, uh, sound guy, whatever. You're doing um, some of our festivals coming up. We're not going to go into them because I don't know when this comes out sometimes. But uh, you're also doing the f- it's the Friday Night Series, right? Yeah, I'm what doing the, Friday? A, the Imagine Original Music Series up here at Alley's. Um, yep. in, in the past, uh, they, they've had a lot of uh, uh, live band entertainment up here, but it was primarily uh, cover bands and yeah. things like that. And I, with, with the introduction of the open stage events that we were doing on, on Wednesdays, and I, and I was also bringing in featured original artists to open that yep. show, that, that has gone so well. Yeah. Um, Ali showed interest in, in doing a Friday night original music series. So I, so I put together the Imagine Original Music Series. I set up a full sound production, um, and and we book these acts mm-hmm. in here, and, I, and we have a good time on Friday. Oh, so. I've been there. You've, and you've had some uh, good acts in, like uh, just the other week. A uh, group I hadn't heard a lot of, don't have a lot of social media on it, but the Flash Bombs, they did really, I, I really yeah, like that part. The Flash Bombs did well. Um, who was that um, before? Um, who, was, who else was on that ticket? Oh, I, it, we had Code Monkey in there Code, on that That's ticket. it, Code Monkey. Yep. I, I know a lot yep. of people who like the Code Monkeys. Yep. I think we were talking about putting Code Monkeys with, uh, what's his name from, uh, oh, he, he, he was here, uh, Beard, he had, it was his first acoustic set, remember? And you were talking about doing a uh, almost a uh, Tenacious D type. Back and oh, forth. Oh, you're talking about Ryan Nobler. Was that Ryan? Ryan yeah, Ryan. Yeah. He was hilarious. It, I like Ryan more a lot. A, a hard rocker g- guy. Yeah, but, but he, he did a he great came in acoustic and did a great set. Acoustic set. Oh, um, it, you know, it. We've kind of uh, been all over the the board as far as our original music. I mean, it, that's what it's about. Right. Is supporting our local original acts here. Um, so you know, at our opening night, we had an 800 pound gorilla oh, with yeah. coup d'état. And they absolutely killed it. Fantastic show. Um, it, we've had uh, some other uh, Fountain Square type bands like uh, Hex Mundy's been out, and they they had a great show. We've booked a few uh, Lafayette bands as well. Um, who all have we had out? Uh, well, it's Space a long Word. List. Yeah, I mean Space Words. They were great. Um, it is a long list. This is our f- first year in, and uh, so far so good. It's been great, and uh, you know. And I think there's occasionally um, it just just so people don't get confused. Like Ash Rock does, like a Friday yep, or it, every couple of months or something well, like that. It, so about every four or five weeks, uh, it, I'll I'll uh, offer the stage to Ash Rock. I believe in what they're doing with that program. Sam Ash is a, oh, yeah. a rock student program. Um, you know, h- half the time. They don't seem like students, and, and it's not just kids. Uh, they yeah, have they have a, that. They have a kids program, then they have an Ash Rock Generations. That's program, what it was, the Generations. Yeah, it, there's older. Which is the adult program, older and, bands, and they go into the yeah. late hours. You know, to yeah. the late hours on the Friday. They, anything out there that's uh, you know, uh, they're trying to build this music scene and do a good thing for for that music community. I'm all in. You know, so oh, yeah. um, they, they're doing great things in that program. So. I oh, know the kids are great. I mean, even but even going back to your open stage, man, you got if we if we go with the kid thing, dude. There's a couple little kids that come in here. Oh, because uh, kids are allowed too. This is a family. This is yep, a family it's bar. All ages. This is all ages. And there's a little dude. Uh, it wasn't the younger kid that was here on just like a recent Friday. I think he covered on a recent Friday. Was that um, who was Gibson the kid? Gibson Wells. Gibson Wells. Good kid too. Oh, he was. But fantastic. there is this little dude um, with a guitar that is way too big for him. Drake, and that dude is pumping out some. He's got he's got some soul. It was a uh, Drake and uh, it, 
and I hope I don't butcher his last name. I believe it's pronounced uh, Mogoyong. Okay. So, uh, Draken Mogoyong. If you guys haven't, this little kid is awesome. Oh, yeah? He's got uh, a he, big old guitar. He's, I mean, he's going to town on that he, thing. He'll, he'll, he'll pull out some uh, Jimi Hendrix-style stuff. He's 11. Really? He's like, a, he's like and 11. And he's singing it and playing it, playing leads on acoustic. I mean, it, it's over the top. I mean, I... Now, don't get me wrong. Gibson Wells is. Oh no, no, and I wasn't taking he's anything. He's a prodigy no, as well. Gibson as well. Yeah, he. I mean, he was on the open stage and then did one of your Friday, you know, one of your Friday yeah. Imagine series ones. Yeah, and that was not a knock on Gibson Wells. I like his stuff too, but it is different than than that little kid just struck me um, he, with his guitar he, work. He's at really his age. young. <laughs> yeah, and he's really young, and he's got some work to do. But you're still blown away. I mean, I know, like, I was sitting there. I think with Darren the first time we saw him, and we're all just sitting there going, "Wow, yeah." yeah. You yeah. know, there's a there's something to be That's said that about it that, that comes the, out of nowhere. The support from the parents as well. Um, it, I know uh, his family in particular are very supportive of him, and I help take him out to all these open stages all over town, and, and you can catch a Drake and playing all over the place. Um, and, I, you know, I, when you have that sort of support system and, and your child has that much talent, you know, it, it yeah. usually ends in a, in a, well, I think in what a good I was opportunity. Yeah. And then the big know? thing I was leading into on that, too, was it's an all-ages thing, too. If parents, if your kid has talent and they want to try, there are young kids here. They're teenagers. It's, it's open stage if for all ages. I think yes, we need this more is not an adult. We need more parents encouraging their kids to do some type of either, art, I would say, artistic avenue. Be sure. It, I mean, music's always been a great escape for me. I never got into drugs. I never got into alcohol until my later years. But honestly, when, when I was playing, like I started playing when I was 10 years old. And then at like 13 or so, a buddy of mine said, you really suck at guitar playing. And this is because this kid was out playing at bars already at 13, 14. So I started actually practicing at that point just because he said I sucked. And then right. it, it was a great creative outlet. And then from there in advance, and then I, I started touring with a Spanish rock group and then did all that. So yeah. it was good. you know. And the, the best thing about it, as you mentioned, my parents supported me. Like yeah. They didn't yeah. once say, you're never going to make it as a rock star. I didn't want to be a rock star. Well, I just wanted to play music. Well, it wasn't a big... And, yeah. and if they don't treat it like an annoyance either, oh, i got to take you over to the, you know... Dude, or, my dad oh, became quit, the quit manager talking. of my first yeah. band. That's yeah. how involved he yeah. wanted to be. He's like, you know what? Let's go full force. Now, man. drummers, a wholly different thing. Nobody wants a drummer in their house. Nobody wants like 10-year-old drummer in their house because you can just say... Shh. <laughs> yeah. That'll drive your parents nuts. Just don't teach your kids drums. <laughs> There's drum machines Pat, for that now. That's such a it. dick, those poor little drummer <laughs> kids yeah, out there. Right? Yeah. You know? What if somebody would have told Tommy Lee kidding. that or Neil Peart or something? I'm just man. kidding, man. Jeez. Speaking of which, uh, guess, guess whose son uh, just signed up in the beginning band in junior high to be a drummer? Yours? Nick. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just found out about this. Uh, it, the, the kids were able to choose their own electives. Oh, nice. So, you know, we're, we're at the house looking through, and it says beginner's band. And uh, Drew's more of an a athletic child, so I was surprised to see it. And I said, "What, would it, what were you going to? Pl- what are you interested in playing?" And when he said drum, uh, okay, I get it. I wasn't <laughs> given an option. <laughs> I wasn't given an option in elementary school, so I, I went to PS fifty one down on uh, Washington. Mm. Um, I think it was fifty. Was that fifty one or fifty seven? They they made Pat play the oboe, and the principal no, took him to the, the office oboe. and said, "This is how you practice." But they literally just <laughs> gave you a choice of. They literally gave you a choice of what instruments were left, right? Yeah. So I got a tenor saxophone. See, I was bad. sax no, is not bad. No, when the sax is taller than you are, yeah. yes. I, I mean the, the the case had wheels. I had to roll it a mile up Washington Street to Arlington to get home from school, and the, <laughs> the damn thing kept breaking because you know it'd be rolling it and bump, and a couple of my keys would always pop off, and he kept having to get it fixed. But the case and everything was bigger than I was at the time. I was well, like, that's I was cool. A that's, a, guy. that's okay, Mike. I got an email saying that my kid was in. Uh, he had elected to be in band. He's going into middle school, and he was going to play the clarinet. So I asked my kid, I'm like, you're taking band? He's like, I don't know. I'm like, well, what it fucking says here that you are. You want to play the clarinet? He's yeah, like, I, w- I didn't want to pick the uh, – well, Hold on, hold on. Okay. He's like, yeah, he's like, I don't I – don't, I, yeah, he's like, they just told us something, and you know, I figured that was okay. And I'm like, yeah, we're going to take you out of that shit. Because <laughs> <laughs> <What? laughs> I, like, I know my kid, so I wasn't going to force him 
to do something that I know he didn't want. So when I really sat down and talked to him, he's like, yeah, I don't want to do that. I'm like, mm. yeah, no, you don't. You, I'm like, you want to do band at all? He's like, no, I want to do some computer shit. I'm like, cool, let's do that. Let's fucking teach you how to build games and shit like that. He's like, forget and this. That's a nice shit. creative outlet. Yeah, but if you knew yeah. he wasn't going to like it. But but then again, he might have. I mean, no, because I think um, his teacher kind of, I didn't want to say forced it onto him mm. but i think there was like this is everyone's gonna join band well, and you uh, should yeah. do it well in elementary school you didn't have a choice band was a class correct correct uh, and, and he did that and and that was fine but this oh, was okay, coming but this into was, middle school oh middle school no yeah, no, no i'm like no you, see like, i i i can t- i tried to continue on because we moved to arizona in middle school and i tried to continue and i realized i, I wasn't any good i you know i i still had to write the letters down on the notes I never really got it. Like I get computers and things and and numbers and all that. I never got the symbols and couldn't really translate that stuff in my head without physically writing it down. And so I tried it for like you know a little bit in middle school when it was an elective, and then I just I dumped it. Oh, you I know, because I, I knew I knew I, w- I wasn't it wasn't something well, I know, was passionate you know. about. Yeah. I think Drew had the option of either home ec or beginning band, and he chose playing drums in beginning band. Yeah, I, yeah. I, no offense to I mean, Drew, he might but make, I really he might don't make want him cooking cake. at the house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, know? you know, you can't fault him for that. You know, he got a, a choice, and you know, he cho- I think he chose right on this one. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you never know. He might he might make a mean cake. Well, it, the first thing I thought is, cool. I don't have to buy nothing. I already have a drum kit that I bought for open stage. Well, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> done and done. I already got the soundproof room and headphones, so I can <laughs> block it all out. Well, it, it, he's trying to sign up for band and for football. He won't be able to do both and because of uh, scheduling. Yeah, you can't, yeah. well, you can't no, be yeah, in the marching band the at the games. game and be playing sure in the can. game. Come on, well, sometimes just switch, just switch. maybe the band if the band team. Well, just go it. take take the pads off yeah. and throw the or marching no, uniform on, on go for halftime. Why can't he put the tuba on? You know. Richard, did you play band? Uh, you, you actually, uh, I did not. No, I I wrestled. But to this day, I still think I could have been probably the greatest drummer alive. I got a drum set for my seventh birthday. My birthday is on December 7th. It was sold by New Year's Eve. <laughs> <laughs> my parents could Your not, parents? Exactly. Could like I'm saying. So the, the parents who, wait, who, who, bought, there. who bought you the drums? My father. And my he bought mother, you the drums? Oh, your mother my sold them. My mother him. got rid of it. Okay. There oh, you know. man. There's that <laughs> Polish father, system. Mexican mother. She would not take it <laughs> any longer. <laughs> nice. <laughs> If your dad would have gotten you a mariachi outfit, you would have been all right. (laughs) So we have another beer in front of us, gentlemen. Now, this this beer I'm going to talk about again because this is a great debate today. Dorian from Scarlet Lane is a very, very popular beer here in Indianapolis, and it's a very good beer. They have the base beer, which is the Dorian Oatmeal Stout, which is their base beer. Then they have their year-round version, which is the Dorian Stout with espresso. Then they have a summer season, which is Dorian Stout with coconut. And then the fall season is Dorian Stout with vanilla chocolate. Well, here we sit in the very beginning of August. And we know what the keg says. But I think the keg and the flavor tell two very different stories. Hold on. I'm not going to tell them yet until we taste it. The keg had, the the label on the keg was also handwritten. Was handwritten, which adds to the mystery of this particular beer. Well, it adds to the possibility of a mistake. So what you guys have, what you're, okay, so here's what we want to know. Do you taste espresso? Do you taste just an oatmeal stout? Do you taste coconut or do you taste a vanilla chocolate? That's where we're going with this. What do you gentlemen taste around the table? And then we'll tell you what the keg actually says. I don't taste coconut. Okay. I taste a straight milk stout. I don't taste any espresso. There's a little bit of bitterness uh, maybe on the tip of the tongue for the espresso. Maybe. but um, I get some coffee finish off it. I don't get the coffee finish. I get it on the tip of the, the tongue f- only. I get it on, on the front end. I was end. thinking kind of a coffee cinnamon kind of finish. Okay. Front end. Yep. All right, we're waiting on you, man. Now, I had the oatmeal stout this weekend at the Indie Brew Fest. Okay. I the don't straight think Dorian. This is it. Yep. So it may it may be the it, it may, may be it may be. Dorian. And so somebody labeled it, um, the keg wrong? Or? I taste the coffee. Okay. okay. Well, I, I so the keg is labeled coconut. I taste coffee. Yeah. I taste coffee. The keg is labeled coconut. Does anybody at this table who are all craft beer drinkers feel there's any coconut in this particular beer? Nick, no. what do you think? No. 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 Okay. No. Because Not I've had the coconut stout I have to. before. <laughs> and and, and it is coca fucking nutty it's like it's an I mean, almond joy. it's like dorian that they squirted suntan lotion in it's an, al- it's an almond it's, it's an almond joy man using the, the outer brown fur 
<laughs> the, the husk. The husk. The husk there you go. Hey, hey, <laughs> some of us like that outer brown fur. Oh, wait, we're talking about beer, aren't we? Sorry. Ooh, uh, <laughs> we're back to Chubbs. <laughs> Yeah, I get Wait, you said you went, like the you went to the microbrewers? You went to the microbrewer festival? I did. How was, was that? It was my first time. Really? A uh, great event. Yep. Um, How were the, the beers? I mean, I only remember the first two hours. Of but, course. Uh, Nobody remembers the last That's funny, because I, I, I texted you, and I asked you if you wanted to go, and you never responded. He was already there. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Did you? Uh, we'll, we'll go back for it. We'll, we'll I was with my stepdad, though. We'll so was kind oh, of, oh, that's yeah. okay. we, we do a lot of festivals, and that, that's funny because we record at the festivals. And we're the same way. We remember the first two hours. It's, everything's great. And, you can just see and the then I'm like, I go to edit the show, and I'm like, fuck, I don't remember ever saying that. But, and Shit, you can did, just see the did quality. Did we talk about the, that? The quality of the show just declines. <laughs> I'm sorry, the usability yeah. of portions so, of the show just well, declines. I spent like the first I no spent, like, the first couple hours trying like the wheat beers, the light beers, and I think when I was probably at the peak, I just started, whatever table I went to and I saw a number higher than 10, I was like, give me that one. Yeah. So just give it in other me. words, the first two hours you felt your mangina growing, and you felt like you had to. Now I must once you got a buzz, exactly, you, you, you exactly. felt the need to prove yourself. Exactly. Yeah, that that happens to all of us, man. Yeah. And they so all look n- like this after. Noblesville Brewfest is coming up, which is a big one where they have over two hundred samples. And last year they sent us right in the middle of the Indiana tent, Holy which crap. is great, but yet bad at the same time. So we just got news that we will be at Noblesville Brewfest again this year. Oh, sweet! And we're going to be right there in the middle of the Indiana tent again. What? Which, which <laughs> we are, which means we're literally within five steps of at least like of every 12, Indiana brewery. Of, yeah, at least like twelve <laughs> breweries. Well, I'll be in town this weekend <laughs> or the, that weekend, so it's going to be perfect. It's I very, wasn't in town last year. It's very dangerous. I'll, I'll go with you that weekend. Ask, ask Riley. Go ahead. <laughs> it's very dangerous. Yeah. It, Riley's gonna be drinking all the cider. Riley taps out after like the first half hour. It's it's okay. Oh no, he didn't. He he he, he did the uh, in our backyard shenanigans show. He he held on for a couple hours there. Yeah, but he brought out cider after like the fourth yeah, hour. <laughs> we got it. We did have to. We did have. We will I'm have like, to beat him. Like for that how one. can we end on a cider? That's just not even. He brought a cider to a beer show. Who does that? <laughs> I mean, I at least bring sours. <laughs> I don't know. The last beer I had on Saturday was a lemon tea beer. Ugh, that and sounds awful. No, no. It was amazing. What? It was who? amazing. Well, hold on. I guess it could only be amazing because it was the last drink I had. Anything probably would have tasted amazing. Do you remember who it was by? It was a brewery in Greenwood. I know that. Oak and Barrel? Oak and Barrel? No. Couldn't tell you. Mm, okay. Couldn't we'll have you. to look that one up. A, a lemon tea beer? It's a lemon tea beer. All righty. Jordan, look that up while we... Uh, R- write that down. Yeah. Write that down. Whitestownbrewfest.com Bienvenidos. Aquí estamos con los marranos. See, he does that every time. Hola. He's oh, just trying to reach out to our Spanish listeners. God, Pat, why are you going to be such a well, damn racist? We have such a huge following in no. China. Like, I want to get, like, the South America fucking <laughs> people. Okay, so. Uh, you laugh, but we do. We, have <laughs> to, we don't have a big. So, speaking of which, though, like, uh, one of our last shows, and it's, it's been kind of weird. Uh, we've talked about it before. We, we seem to be oddly big in Lebanon, uh, the country. Or, the you country, know, not <laughs> the city. Not, not, Le- not Lebanon. Lebanon. Um, but this last like couple shows, we, this last show we did, we got we got a big ass hit in Japan all of a sudden, and and granted for um, for our you know listenership and stuff, and a big to us is you know you know maybe small to some other people, you know you know how it is. Yeah. But I mean I get that a lot. But um, yeah, you and your American Indian pendulum that swings down there. <laughs> but no, it's uh, we it's it's really big. It's really weird. Just you know we it's hit really a, a large a large. Um, a bunch of downloads in Japan all of a sudden too, so we're getting bigger. Okay, it's, it's awesome, man. We're, it was we were over, we we did three times the amount of downloads on our last show in a day. Yeah, than like our last couple, sh- some of our older shows. That's it's, pretty it's, awesome. It's, yeah, it is. It's pretty awesome. Well, like I was just weirded out, out on the, like the Japan hit all of a sudden. Six seven hundred in like less than twenty four hours. I think it was. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty. Well, yeah, for our numbers, that's pretty good. So since I threw that joke in there, I'm just going to say this: if you, if you go literally, if you go around the table today <laughs> with our friends and who we have on the show, we have you know American Indian over here. We have Sam, who is African American of descent. Do you see how proper can I am we, in that? Can we just Deuces. say black? Can we just say black? Well, I don't know. What's the I was term? trying to be proper, <laughs> Sam. Come on. We're trying to be PC because we don't want to get is the, like, term? the NAACP after our ass. <laughs> <laughs> just black. It's just black. It's, it's a black. rainbow coalition and then, up and in and here. And then over here we have the Mexican who is self-proclaimed Mexican. And then we have the Polexian over here. Okay, Polexican. we have a Polexian. Who gets Polexican. a Polexian on their show? Polexican. We do. That's right. We do. The blind pigs. We had to meet a quota. <laughs> and, then, and then we got a few yeah. other random white guys sitting around, but that's you know yeah. that's beside the point. Your, your <laughs> can't count was down. 
<laughs> well, right, true, AJ, very true. We have the uh, white guy with the Arabic name because yeah, his father is actually from India. So, oh, really? Yeah, his. You, you know what his full name is? Jordan. Jordan can't actually AJ, pronounce it. AJ. It's what I heard. <laughs> no. Nobody. Nobody can actually N- pronounce it, but AJ. Oh no, that's not true. Nazir Ali by Yadavi Lalani. Is his full name? Shut the fuck up. Are you serious? <laughs> no, seriously. I yeah. No, shut the fuck up because I can't say that. That's no, you can't. <laughs> but I grew up with the guy, so I can say it. But yeah, so I mean, we we got a very eclectic group around the table today, which is awesome for us. I mean, I love it. We love the rainbow. That coalition. should be the spelling bee finale. <laughs> oh my god! Oh right, <laughs> oh my dude. Gosh. Kindergarten must have sucked for you. <laughs> <laughs> he, he actually can't fill out a lot of forms because it, there's not enough of the boxes for the <laughs> characters for his full name. I mean, mine's yeah. Niwadomsky, and it took me until fifth grade to learn how to spell it, so I can't imagine. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> no, my yeah. parents did me a favor. They just gave me the whitest name ever, so I'm good. Lloyd. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we're missing? We are missing an Asian, though. Sorry, Pat. Oh, well. The one thing that Pat has a fetish for, we're missing at the table. He, yeah, he's, he's not the only one. No. He's not the only no. one. No, we, we were talking about, were we talking about ginger Asians at the you bar the, No, You, no, you he, said that to the uh, freaking chef tonight. There's right, not you, very, you, m- there's you, not a lot of Asian, ginger, ginger Asian I don't, I don't. boys around, though. Why do they got, I, I don't want an Asian ginger well, boy. Well, I thought we were talking about Pat. <laughs> oh, true. Oh. Very true. Very El, true. El Pato has spoken. <laughs> he got totally quiet on that, too. He did, no, right? He's he, like, totally, he was like, eh. He's like, there is a website. You just sent him to his happy place, and he couldn't speak. He was just like, mm-hmm. see the frown on my face. No. <laughs> no, you were talking about you. You were talking about like chicken wing sauces or something. You were changing out, and you was like, "Yeah, I, I use. I really, really like the Asian. Like it's an Asian ginger sauce, like from Benihana." And I'm like, "Uh, yeah. I don't know. Oh, he's got it. Why? Are you, what are you looking for?" But he's well, like, and I made a comment of, "Yeah, I could really use an Asian ginger too." So it was funnier at the time. <laughs> so because I made I made the chef like he just started blushing. He was like, "Shit." Yeah, I'm pretty sure you didn't make chef blush. And he's actually of Asian descent. Chef the Rodcast. Chef Rodley yes. of the Rodcast. Absolutely. Yeah, go so back and listen to that episode. We had a, we had a Rodcast Do we episode. have a beer in front of us? We, we do. do. We're sampling a beer. It is from Two Deep Brewing. It's called the Night Stick Cream Ale. It's one of those cans with the, the, the wide the, mouth cans. Where the whole yeah. top pops off. It's yes. No longer just a those little. Those are called the wide mouth cans. Yeah, you would know that. I smell cream. Is there a cream in this? What is this? It's a cream ale. It's a cream oh, ale. Oh, shit. That's why I smell cream. <laughs> I didn't. I wasn't paying attention. That's pretty. We're good pretty sure. We're pretty promise. sure we went over that one. I promise. We're professionals. It is a four point seven alcohol by volume. So again, this is going to be another one of those uh, light domestic beer type. That's all right. I'm, styles. I'm fortifying my light domestic beers with my heavy other ones. Well, no, that's because Pat decides as soon as we start the show. Hey, let's all do a shot of Dickel to get the show started. Yeah, and no, I'm not bitching. I'm just saying that okay. happened. See, it was on his tab, so we're good. That's true. No, it's on the Blind Pigs tab that we split up at the end That's of the night. True. But <laughs> I'm not a Blind Pig. Definitely a cream ale. Yeah, you can't, you can't mistake that. I think we let it get a little too warm because we did leave that can out for a little while. We I, did. Yeah. But, but that in doing cold, so. It's still okay. In doing so, some of the aroma is actually like released with the, being a warm can. Yeah, but there's a little bit of texture back in the back end. I think you lose you lose some of the crispness. You lose a little yeah, of the crispness from a for that cream ale when it gets a little too warm. Did he say dark Christmas? Beers. Crispness. Crispness. I was like, I don't taste anything Christmas in that beer whatsoever. I should hope not. It just tastes like a cream I ale. I tell you what though, it's a lot heavier than the uh than the Day Blazer. Now this I would consider a boat beer. I like this better, yeah. I do well, comparing the two, I like that better than I like the Day Blazer. Well, I think we established I would drink that. Day Blazer was our barbecue beer for brats, it, chicken. It was, it was so our so cooking so. beer. We it called it our, our cooking, cooking beer. beer. Yes, yes, mm. yes. It they was might, the can you shoved like in the chicken's but arse. Yes. Arse. No arse. offense there, New Belgium, but your beer is the uh, chicken's ass beer. <laughs> um, is I that offensive? I'm not sure. I didn't have a chance to taste sure. the other one, but um, We're getting back not here. a fan of the nightstick, so. Too light, too. I mean, why not? I mean, you can't just say uh, I'm not well, a fan. What's, it, what's wrong with it? I don't know. Maybe it's just it was just too warm. Um, it felt like it tasted like something like more like you said a domestic beer. So to me, it tastes like a heavier a Budweiser type deal. Like you got a Budweiser that went skunk, and then it's like you know I guess the creaminess is on the top. So yeah, I think we screwed it up by yeah, yeah, it's exactly. the warm. We, we yeah, pulled yeah. It yeah. Out. I think I, I think I, bad. It was a bad. We pulled out warm. too soon. Yeah. So <laughs> I would I, like to try I, when it's cold. I always maybe, do that. But maybe it'd be better. <laughs> we can do that. Nico, I know we've talked a lot about Alley's Night, and we've, I think we've covered just about everything with you, right? Yeah. Check out Studio Live Indie. Thanks, guys. We're, <laughs> we're at Alley's Hell House, and 
we did a lot with with Nico's open stage and what Nico does on Fridays. Studio Live Indie. Studio uh, Live Indie. Imagine Series on Fridays. Imagine Series on Fridays. And we had a lot of great beers on that one. So what we're going to do now is I think we're just going to go ahead and cut this episode. And we're going to start up a new episode. We're going to record a new one tonight here at Alley's. And uh, we got a whole new cast on here. We got Trey. We got Chris. We got the... Um, Polexian. The Polexian. 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 No, Polexican. Like Polexican. Polish, I guess Polexian is a disease, isn't it? Probably. Polexican is a, it it is a, is a race. It sounds, it sounds like Okay. Yeah. So let's do that because we got a lot of other stuff to talk about. So, all right. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you soon. Asta. Cheers. There's a place called a gin mill way down in the slums. There's a place called a gin mill way down in the slums. My baby goes that night and stays till the morning comes.